Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. I'm getting awesome! You're getting awesome! We're getting awesome! Yeah, that's what I said now! It's the awesome cast number 63. We're here again. We got a little bit new setup, a little bit of difference. I'm Sorg, because I don't introduce myself to these things. I know. But this is the awesome cast where we geek out about tech. Congratulations. Yes. You introduced yourself. I introduced myself. Before, yes, I'm trying to before learn. Before everyone else. Before everybody else. That's awesome. Yes. Way to be a awesome. dick. With me, as usual, the trusty awesomer in the hat. What the hell? Awesome. <laughs> in the hat. Rob De La Creta. Uh, All set to white balance our cameras. From the view. It yeah, I, like... I am pretty. Well, I mean, even though this is a blue wall, so really. What does your shirt <laughs> say? What does your shirt say? Uh, butcher. Okay. I thought it said something else, and that was going to get us kicked off TV. What did you think it said? What, it, what could it possibly... <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I see that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bubble uh, gum. So, uh, how you doing? Yeah. How you doing? You made it home. You're not in a warehouse. You're not in Baltimore. You're I'm not at home. As, yeah, I'm you're legitimately. Not as... I'm in my place of sleeping. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. And um, other things. And other things. I mean, I think sleeping is. I usually sleep here. I've never <laughs> slept at the studio, so that's a thing. That's good. That's probably for the best. Definitely. Yes. Uh, but I, I'm here, and I'm I'm rocking the the black and yellow because our pirates won last night. I'm just saying. Nice. nice. It was two o'clock in the morning, but we oh, did geez. win. They're liking those late ones, aren't they? Well, it, it, it's not their fault. They're on the West Coast. Yeah. yeah. So let's, oh. let's put that out there. They're I'm in San Francisco. So. There's Chachi. I don't know where Chachi Sorry. is anymore because we moved him. Yeah, I'm over we here. We have a new new camera mm-hmm. set up with a microphone. He's all set. I'm going to call this Chachi's Corner. Chachi's Corner? Nobody else is allowed to sit there? Nope. Does that mean I have to set this up every week? Yep. Because, ah. Uh, yep. Just leave it like it is. I can't. That's the good camera. So? <laughs> <laughs> so Chachi's hanging out. Nice t-shirt, yeah. by the way. Yes. Limited edition. They're That's already. Right. They're already. They kind of can't, can't see the good part of the t-shirt. It's all, it's all there. there. Oh shit! Oh, sorry. There you go. Gotham see? Rogues yes. from the uh, shoot this weekend. But um, where they blew up Heinz Field. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, Heinz Ward rode around on a on a thing. On a Batmobile. <laughs> on a thing. I the Tumblr. Yeah, the it. Tumblr. But um, yeah, they're already uh, figuring out how to bootleg this shirt on the internet. Because I'm sure it's only going to be weeks before we see some dude standing on a corner downtown trying to sell. I know. Um, I, I was doing a search because I, I was curious to see what the eBay auctions were at. Mm-hmm. Because yesterday, two auctions were up for this shirt that you could only get if it was tossed to you in the stands at the filming Saturday. Mm-hmm. But um, I didn't get mine there. Chris was a production assistant and they made her work 17 hours. So they give her a paycheck and a shirt. Nice. But um, uh, people are extremely upset about the fact that everyone didn't get one of these shirts. Yeah, because yeah, you know, oh my god, that you know. But um, so uh, some of the people who did get shirts are putting them on eBay, and they're ranging everywhere from a hundred to six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. For a shirt, like for one a shirt. shirt, for this yeah. shirt, yeah, and it's just—I mean, it's Under Armour. It's like that yeah. stretchy material and stuff. Did you see the uh, the Under Armour jerseys for the Gotham Rogues? I did. Yes, yes. they're kind of plain. Yeah, they oh. are pretty plain, but they're really well made. And yeah, they are. Well, think the see the thing is, I I wanted to mug half the people on the sidelines mm-hmm. because like they didn't just bring in football players, but they brought in actual. Uh, uh, trainers from the Steelers, and they outfitted them as if they were actual trainers. So Water Boy got one. Yeah. So th- you have guys on the sidelines pretending that it's uh, late fall, early winter. They're wearing uh, Gotham Rogue sweatpants, Gotham Rogue hoodies with Rogue shirts underneath, hats, and uh, custom made black and gold shoes. Here's a here's a shot here. Uh, from hypable.com, uh, somebody that was there, a few pictures while he's talking here. Go ahead. Oh, uh, that was it. But I, I, so I went on, on, uh, I did a quick search on my lunch today to see what the auctions on eBay were, and I can only find one, so I don't know if the other two were taken down or sold, but, um, 
It was four hundred and forty nine dollars. Buy it now. And I found a, a message board where they were already uh, copying the logo off of the shirt, so someone well, could make I, I T-shirts saw one, for them. I, I saw one where they're like, "Oh, that's something that somebody's going to vectorize like really quick." Yeah, and yeah. Like, I'm surprised yeah. it's taken like, this long. I mean, looking at all of the designs have been super, mm -hmm. yeah. super simple. Mm -hmm. so. and, and, and and then the next post down was somebody that was like, "Well, here's a start." Yeah, and it was it was pretty square on for the actual logo, like the like if you show there the 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 whole um oh, yeah. like the face part of it. I mean, that's yeah. easy. That, yeah. that, that, that's really no. Easy. It's you know, not a hard stuff. logo to no, rip no, off. No, no. Definitely. So I mean, yeah, there will be T-shirts. Theirs aren't official. That was cool. Sixty explosions in the middle of Heinz Field. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Oh yeah, yeah the one didn't go off. The one was a dud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so there you go it, it was a and fun we saw bane yeah it was a fun experience i'll never do it again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was bane playing linebacker what was bane doing there all of the bane uh, we well, can't tell I, you I, I can't tell you it's a spoiler i can tell you it's off a, air it's a I mean, secret I, I, hey there's loca bone right there hey coming at us from Hi, everybody from erie uh you can guess what channel he's at he was if you're just, on video. <laughs> he was just mad that I was still talking and he hadn't been introduced yet. Yeah, yeah let's, hey. let's not bury the lead here. They blew up Heinz Field. That's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and killed Heinz Ward and our mayor as the kicker. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> fantastic. I'd love to hear that. So, Chachi, instead of selling the shirt for $600, you decided to just wear it today? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. $600. You can probably buy it for $9.99 in you know, a couple weeks or maybe a couple months. Probably, probably the, this yeah, time I'm next gonna year. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, you got one. I, well, now, now that you've sullied it with Chachi stench, of course you have well, to keep no, it. No, it's Under Armour, so it's sweat and odor resistant. Oh, it wicks it away. I yeah. Get it. So, a good washing and good, good technology. Yeah, good to go. Good shirt technology, right yeah. there. Yeah, this is the perfect shirt for Awesome Cast because of the technology that went into making it. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> So Loca Bone joins us again. You are the graphic artist up at uh oh I'm gonna mess it up. W I C U Erie and, and W S E E. We're kind of merged together now in a sticky situation. So there's a couple stations up here. We also do news for the for thirty six Caribbean countries. What? So yeah. <laughs> Wait, exactly, yeah, out of here, Whoa. Little area, Pennsylvania. Wait, Whoa. hold on. You do news for Caribbean countries? Yes. Like you every... show them Erie news? Uh weather. It's a uh, one Caribbean television. We broadcast a 36 different countries were the only English speaking weather channel in the Caribbean. <laughs> That's awesome. So, wow. Are these like well known Caribbean countries or? <laughs> uh, no, most ones that dictators own. Yeah, no, they're well known. Uh, Puerto Rico, <laughs> Turks and Caicos, Belize. Um, yeah. You know, everyone you've probably heard of or, you know, vacation would want so you're to. You're happily bringing uh, the weather to the drug cartels of South America. And and even better, it's done by our weatherman Joey Stevens, who's been here for thirty some years, and his puppet parrot that he has on his hand. So the, parrot, <laughs> the parrot actually talks to, to the audience, and he gets in arguments with the parrot. A great weatherman always needs to have a puppet. No, yeah, and no and, and, wonder you broadcast to the drug cartels. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be high to enjoy it. Uh, the best part is when we're not broadcasting, and he uh, actually stays in character with the puppet while talking to me. That, that's just oh man I, yeah i did just find the website for one caribbean weather i mean i didn't find the parrot puppet but definitely has a picture of a parrot at the top i imagine oh. this is you guys yeah he has a facebook page and i think he has a twitter account i'm not oh, sure how active he is because oh, he doesn't have fingers there's a wordpress uh, page so <laughs> yeah <laughs> tremendous so um so he'll be here to talk with us with the news and also with us uh chime in if he so decides to is if the, I have anything to say. If he has anything to say, the Russell fan, Eamon Payton. Hi, from, how's it going? Hey, where are you from? From uh, Corp. How do you say Corpus? You say Corpus Crispy. How how do you say it in your native tongue? It, it's it, it might as well be Corpus Crispy, Texas. Hi, uh, awesome casters. You may not know me uh, unless you watch the other Sorgatron Media. Uh, and I'm bored already. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm not surprised, Chappy. <sighs> No, he's a co-host with us up on uh, on uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show, and he's in for the the weekend and the week and everything. I, I can talk tech. I have a MacBook. What up? There you go. He's <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> you got an I, I'm more I'm more than qualified. Okay. And done. He, I'm has, done. Wait, I quit. And, and he has an I Android quit. phone. I quit. I yeah, quit. Yeah, it's not with me. Consider no? this my resignation. I quit. <laughs> Why do you quit? Because he said I can talk tech. I own a MacBook. <laughs> I wouldn't even. This, this is tech, okay, sir? I'm done. Right here. 
Right here. This is the epitome of tech. I'm done. I, I, I made, quit. I made Chachi quit. quit. Woo! <laughs> He's so flustered. It's amazing. Um, My head hurts. Anyway, so now that we've... Uh, I'm, pretty, intru- I'm pretty sure the headphones are absorbing the blood that's <laughs> leaking out of my ear right now. Now that we've introduced the Rogues Gallery for tonight, uh, this is the awesome cast. You can catch us live Tuesdays, 7 p.m. live at SorgatronMedia.com. Tweet us at, at AwesomeCast or email us at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. You can also uh, uh, drop us a line at 724-25-ACAST and leave a voicemail at 724-252-2278. Catch us on iTunes, MediaFly, Roku, Box, Flip TV and YouTube, subscribe to us, comment to us, let us know how we're doing. So I guess uh, right what, now we're failing. Right now we're failing at awesome. Um, what? Right now we're failing. Thank you. So. <laughs> thanks, Thank you. Thanks. So thanks for the the downturn, the positivity in hey, this episode, you know what? man. The stickers say that we banter in technology, and now we just said that any yep. any person with a MacBook. <laughs> Well, we didn't. Talk tech. No, we didn't say that. I said that. That's he right. Said he that. said that. Um, I, I personally do not vouch for recipe. <laughs> don't worry, Can he please Rob, be keyed as an expert now that he has a MacBook? Don't worry, Rob. Nobody does. An expert. <laughs> Okay, moving on. <laughs> Anyways, we do have some news to get to this week. Uh, it was a little seemed a little light. Uh, so, uh, we'll go, what do we want to go with first, here, guys? Time. Well, hey, we can we can oh, actually. Uh, yes. We can. Let, let's get the the stupid things out of the way. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, so Chachi's we're, items. We here we go. <laughs> so, no, no, no! It's not even. It's not even in the dock. Oh, oh I did, this I is going to be good. I'm not going to have links Wait, for it. This is going to be. It's good. it's what anybody because it's been a slow tech news week. This is what all the news agencies are going to be talking about today. Okay. Apple topped Exxon as the most highly valued publicly traded company. Really. Now this. That's is, scary. Now there's been a, a downturn in at the, in the market lately. We just lost our credit rating down down an A and a half or something like that, and and so Apple just topped Exxon, yeah, just topped somebody that's raping us on uh, on uh, oil prices. Yeah, the uh, so do, 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 do. Apple is currently valuing today. They closed at three hundred forty six point seven billion dollars, and at some point throughout the day, they topped Exxon, but Exxon was able to close. At three hundred forty-eight point three billion dollars, so they're really jumping back and forth between two billion dollars worth of worth, worth of worth. Yeah, I said that. Wow. So it doesn't it doesn't actually mean anything. They're they're battling for market cap, which is very cool. But Apple has obviously been growing. But it's what you're going to hear about, and I'm just telling you. I mean, what what is what is market cap for those that don't know? Uh, how much money they have to trade with? Like the dumbest way to say that is how much money they have to trade with. Okay. How many people have invested in how many stocks have been purchased and, and all that stuff. There's a lot of trickle down stuff, and it's like I said, it doesn't actually mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really what it just like to. the rest of the stock market, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's Whatever. Go. Let's just go with that. Let's just go with that. All right. So it's yeah, still pretty so, uh, impressive when you consider what Exxon does and. You know, Apple, what Apple does. Yeah. And Exxon is, has been around forever since, you know, dinosaurs were smushed in the oil. They've been around. <laughs> More or less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a company that says ingrained in America like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it says a lot as far as what the company is, uh, what they're valuing is, because we all know that Exxon is mostly overinflated. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure plenty of people would be happy to, to dispute that, but hey. Exxon's overinflated, <laughs> and we shouldn't be paying what we pay for gas. And that that whole conversation we're not. But that's have. a conversation not for this show. That's a conversation not for this show. But uh, it's very cool that a company like Apple that has come so far in the last couple of years has come far enough that it can take on you know the like when you think about big money in America, it is obviously in the oil companies. You don't mm-hmm. think it's necessarily in like little picture boxes you hold in your hand. <laughs> and this is, uh, Microsoft and Intel aren't coming anywhere near this, right? No, not at all. They're yeah. not even touching. Yeah, and, and I mean, and, and you would think something like Intel and Microsoft are, you know, more in the business, more ingrained in technology. I mean, Intel chips and, and their technology is in how many things, and, and Microsoft has their stuff everywhere. Um, and, to give you an idea, I think Intel's current market cap is $103 billion. Okay, okay. So they're like half of what Apple gets. So that's that's really interesting when you put it in that perspective then. Um, and a lot of it has to do, it, uh, a market cap in a company can increase because of um, 
partially because of overinflation and evaluation in, in the sense of Exxon, because then you're talking about the price of a barrel of oil. In Apple's sense, it is how much hype is attached to what this company can accomplish okay. in the next few years. Okay. Because when you invest in a company, you're hoping that whatever they do, whatever moves they make, convinces other people that they are worth money <laughs> and that they will do cooler things. So basically, if I buy stock, I will only make money if after I buy stock, somebody else is convinced to buy stock as well. So, so Apple is winning by convincing everybody that they're going to continue to do cool things. <laughs> Right. As opposed to Exxon's, we're going to still be delivering oil and we're not going to run out anytime soon. Right. Interesting. Like, uh, the oil thing is all, a lot of old blood mm -hmm. uh, and, and Apple sitting on the other side of the spectrum as being on the cutting edge of technology. Interesting. Interesting. So, so you think we're going to see a lot of these, uh, these uh, new blood companies start rising up or is Apple an uh, extreme case of this? Well, I think we, we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago about the whole tech bubble thing, because mm -hmm. you think about companies like Google and Facebook, which are sitting on incredibly high valuations for the company itself mm -hmm. um, of, of how much money per share uh, Google is right now. I can't even remember, but it, you know, every time you look at it, you're like, oh, wow, I really wish I had bought a share when, at their initial public offering when it was cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody back said when they were in the garage. Right. But when you look at all these companies that are essentially part of today's tech bubble, one of the few companies that is not offering a bubble but actually selling physical devices mm -hmm. is Apple. And that's probably partially, I'm going to fathom, why Apple is able to accomplish this, whereas the other tech companies aren't necessarily out there because the other companies have the idea behind them. Like, certainly Google can go far. Facebook could go far. Mm -hmm. But there's something about tangible devices and things that you can buy in legitimate stores that just push you that much further. And there was some some talk going on uh, about how a lot of the tech companies like Samsung, like Sony, uh, are finding problems. Of course, Sony has its own problems otherwise, uh, where they stocked up on things because of the, uh, the devastation in Japan. And mm -hmm. now they're finding they're not selling these things. They have too much stock right. and there's just there's just too much on hand now. So I, I'm wondering if Apple is finding a, a, a better balance Holy uh, versus these guys. Well, they're certainly in a position to have a better balance. I don't know when this show turned into Market Watch, but <laughs> <laughs> they're in a position well, to have a better balance. Well, this is important for everybody. Wait, that we're you know playing with these devices and everything. I mean, this is uh you know uh, well the one example they gave was the HP Touchpad already got slashed. Uh, yeah. Down to three ninety nine, I think, for a sixteen gigabyte. Um, so I mean, this isn't just like some financial, you know, up in the air like stock markety thing. This is something we're seeing, and and people are are, are putting a dollar sign on uh, for cool stuff that we're talking about. Um, yeah, and and Apple is Apple is a tech example of which there are very few these days because mm -hmm. uh, more and more they have we have the conversation of um, the the atom versus the versus the bit, in that like bits can be. Uh, uh, recreated for no cost at all whereas atoms cannot and that's the idea that like to make an ipod it costs money to make a copy of osx lion it does not cost money once you make the first thing everything else is all money in the bank mm -hmm. but when you're making physical products there's that cutback where you actually have to figure out how you're going to source your materials apple is in an incredible bargaining position because they have this um the people who buy apple products at least have a sense of value in those products that you don't get from the people who buy an hp laptop if you buy an HP laptop, you buy it because you like Windows. Mm -hmm. When you buy an Apple laptop, you're spending a lot more money because you like the entire experience. You're going for the hardware and the software that comes in that package that you can get nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's their bargaining chip, and that's why you see things like the iPhone selling at places like Walmart, who are known for crushing the people that they buy from. Like, you, you have a $20 pair of pants. Walmart is going to convince you that you want to sell it to them for $5. the market prices. Oh, you got the market prices? Yeah. Okay, what you got there, Josh? Uh, Apple was last traded at three seventy four oh one. Google was last traded at five seventy three forty one. That's not market cap, though. No, that, that's, that's just what they were trading yeah, at today. That's their it's, last share trade. Okay, okay. So even with that, Apple's still crushing Google in share cap uh, or trade cap or whatever. The some <laughs> and, and something Chilla uh, tosses to me in the chat room here is uh apple got recently got an injunction of the eu against samsung to stop selling the galaxy tab 10.1 which i think they also did on Austra in australia as well mm -hmm. i mean we haven't talked too much about the patent stuff really i think it's really it's a 
long form discussion that's going to go on, and I really don't want to get into it. But it is interesting that that Apple is is being successful in shutting down its competition uh, in some of these cases. Yeah, it's it's all about bargaining positions, and it's I mean, <clears throat> not to say that they're bulletproof in any form. And a lot of these companies go through a lot of like big decision making processes. And you think when you have billions of dollars behind you to make these decisions you would make the right one like every time but i think sony is a pretty good example of the fact that that's absolutely not true mm -hmm. um are yes. we done with this uh, <laughs> do you have somewhere to go from this i do okay yeah um sony is gonna fail again <laughs> <laughs> so chachi's fail watch uh for sony uh, uh, fail watch. Fail watch. uh <laughs> no seriously we need a graphic for chachi's sony fail watch the sony uh playstation vita yeah. The new handheld is going to miss the most important time in American sales. The most wonderful time of the year, some yeah, say. Christmas. That's mm -hmm. right. Where yeah. all where the game consoles and all the gaming companies make their money in mm -hmm. America, mm -hmm. they, they're missing it. Yeah. <laughs> so PlayStation Vita will miss Christmas in the U.S. and in Europe, but yes. not, not Japan, I don't think. Yeah, but... Don't forget Canada. Canada? Everybody uh, forgets Canada. No, I... Uh, Actually, Canada is considered the U.S. market. Yeah, I think. It's it's not actually U.S., it's North America. Okay. Okay. So, so, so Mexico, too. Yes. Fantastic. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that. so that's two hits we're Thumbs seeing. Thumbs up, Sony. That's two, two hits we're seeing from the two top handheld makers, Sony and uh, Nintendo. Nintendo <sighs> dropped its prices, which, again, could go to, you know, what we're seeing in the tech industry where... Uh, everybody's kind of, you know, having too much stock for what they have to deal with. Um, but yeah, there's another one for Sony. Now I saw the release date, or at least I thought I saw it today. The release date was the 31st of December. Is that why it? could why couldn't they push it up seven days, ten days, a month? Yeah, that seems kind of. Well, the funny thing is, uh, Blockbuster reported that it was going to be out in October. Wait, when did we when did we start caring about what Blockbuster is? Yeah, say? exactly. Like, we don't. <laughs> but, Come yeah. on. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. It Blockbuster reported that it was going to be out in October, and it's already I passed through this. the FCC. I'm sure, learned, Blockbuster at one yeah. point said they were never going to go yeah, bankrupt. Probably. I learned this lesson ages ago when the release dates for Nintendo games used to be in the Sears catalog. Don't trust them. So yeah. Hey, you know what other uh, release dates have fallen flat on their face? Nope. What's that? Uh, you know that fancy Thunderbolt thing for Apple? That thing? Oh, yeah. What's going on with that? Yeah, you know how Lacey was supposed to come out with uh, the first uh, peripheral to yeah, let you use that? Yeah, a whole bunch thing? of spiffy numbers that blew everything away and make me want to get one? Yeah, I mean, so uh, I've got one of these fancy laptops, and I, golly gee, would sure love to use one of those fancy uh, Lacey uh, external drive thingies, but somebody's not hitting their deadline of summer 2011. You're looking at you, Lucy. You're on my watch. So wait, wait. Now, didn't the Thunderbolt port replace like the mini display port? It is. The cool thing is that it is essentially the same thing. I mean, if okay. I wipe the little indicator of a lightning bolt off the side of my laptop, you would have no idea that it was some, anything fancy or new because it looks exactly like a display port. So, and so it functions the same. It's it's backwards compatible and everything. Oh, good. So so you're not you're not dongleless. No, I'm not dongleless at all. I can use external displays, and it all works fine. It's just yes. unless I have uh, Apple peripherals of display, you. What? What? I have what? good use for uh, Thunderbolt. What? Insinu it's a real question. He's insinuating that I, Rob is dongleless. I wanted to make sure he didn't have, have any dongle problems when he, you know, walked into a pod camp and wanted to do a session on why we suck at Twitter, and <laughs> and we we didn't have a dongle. Speaking for of him. which, Rob, I thought about you all day today because of that. Yeah. <laughs> It wow, was, Chachi, really? It was annoying hashtags all day on Twitter. Uh, do, you, do you want to get into this? No. We should get into it. Do you want to talk about it? We, we were talking about it before the show. Chachi was talking, talking about before the show. He He's upset about misuse of hashtags on Twitter. And now, Rob, you are the, uh, the, 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 the by and large, the expert on, on people misusing <laughs> Twitter. Uh, yeah, you're the... Uh, I don't know if that's the way to put it, but... <laughs> I want a t-shirt that says You're the that. governor says, of Twitter. I'm an expert at Twitter. Ask me why you stink at Twitter. Uh, that'll be the t-shirt we'll get you for... for I think I'm going to do another session this year, and I'm actually just going to take the video from last year and play it on a projector. And or you should away. call it Things You Didn't Learn From My Session Last Year on Twitter. <laughs> and people just line up and I punch them in the face. 
Wait, do you, submissions you're now podcastpittsburgh.com. Well, you you tickets. want me there first, don't you? Then <sighs> for doing it wrong, you want me the first one in line. Uh, you just want to get that out of the way. I don't. I'll, honestly, I think you tweet at times that I don't see it because I can't. <laughs> I can't honestly think of a time where I saw your stream and I was like, "Oh, Joshy, you are you are down for the count." <laughs> yeah, no, I I I'm very self conscious on what I'm tweeting nowadays. Nowadays, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, every time you tweet, it's like, "Is Rob going to punch me for this?" No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with other people that could be reading my stream. So, like, oh, oh, the swearing, whole... the swearing this down to a minimum. Mm. The inappropriate comments is down to a minimum. That's unfortunate. The useless crap is down to a minimum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I still join in conversations, but I try to make them more meaningful. And and then I post all the stuff that I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, uh, we were talking about hashtags, I think? No, yeah, no. no, we weren't. No, we weren't? Okay. Well, I mean, we were. We just put it out there, so. I think it's a dumb conversation to have for the show. I think we should move on. <laughs> okay, then. I don't know what's going on. There you go. Chachi, I told you to Chachi move on. That. <laughs> you okay, listen to Chachi. We move on. Um, yeah, so this uh, Comcast Internet Essentials offers a $10 internet access for low-income families. I believe it was if you get a school lunch, you get internet. <laughs> Instead of chocolate milk or with chocolate milk? I, Are we talking about question. Nebraska again? Um, oh. Eat it, Nebraska. By the way, Rob, the logo you sent me was amazing, and it's got to be a t-shirt. I didn't. See <laughs> I can't repeat it or show it here. I didn't see the logo. I think we're you can think of what the either. logo is, considering what we're talking about. Um, and we'll show everybody afterwards. Uh, this is why you want to be on the live. I was I was sitting on a bed in Baltimore, desperately trying to come up with a new sticker design, and that was the first idea that came into my head. <laughs> I definitely, you know, yeah, I, I definitely can't show that on the show, but maybe we we should make a limited run of stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they don't. Yeah, I, I'm sure Sticker Giant won't mind. By hey, the Rob, way, by Rob, sticker, Rob, can I throw out sticker Giant's awesome. Yes, it is. I mean, they they, they I, I ordered those things Friday, and they came in today. Yes. On oh yeah, they're they're amazing. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you can show them the stickers that you are wearing. It's, it's, it's very. I don't know if it's going to work on no, that. It's, it's, right, it's but... rather. I, I'll have to. I can get closer. Get closer. Get closer. Show it off. Come to us. Show, come it come can't. to the people. There you go. There's the sticker that we'll have in nice. Baltimore. Backwards. The, no, the, the work of Mr. Dro Rob De La Creta. He is awesome. Let <laughs> me don't hear you. I know. <laughs> but, um, so. So hey, Rob, you're you're absolutely right, Rob. Um, this the story is about Nebraska. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, it says. Earlier this year, when Comcast brought up MB or bought up NBC Universal, the company made a promise to boost broadband access to underserved communities, and with the launch of its new Internet Essentials service, it looks poised to follow through on that commitment. This is, of course, from Engadget.com. Yes. Originally laid out as the Comcast Broadband Opportunity Program, the program offers Internet access for 10 bucks a month to family, Families with children who qualify for free lunch programs. He, he wasn't kidding. Yeah. Taking its commitment even further, the outfit is offering a $150 voucher for the purchase of a computer, access to free digital literacy training, and a Norton security suite. Ah, uh, why are they punishing Ugh. the people? Yeah, exactly. Norton Securities. <laughs> All things that, well, except for semantic, I wouldn't give that to Nebraska, but everything else Nebraska needs. So the requirements you 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 do have to be good on previous Comcast bills, and uh, yeah, there you go. I do have a I have a fun fact related to residents of Nebraska. <laughs> uh, on the Twitters today, I don't have a source for it, but it was uh, from some tech news feed. Uh, apparently, there's still something like eight million people on AOL. Mm -hmm. um, wait, well, how did you... wait? There's eight million people in Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, and think, surrounding states. I think there may only be 10. <laughs> um, but there's there's 8 million people on AOL. 90% of them have been continuous members for 10 years or more. And they all pay about $17 a month for dial-up service. Wow. So they're single-handedly keeping AOL in business. Congratulations, exactly, to Nebraska. Yeah. Way to go, Nebraska. Congratulations, slow, Nebraska. Slow, slow clap for Nebraska. Just rename it NOL. 
Nebraska <laughs> online because they're the only ones still subscribing to it, I think. Probably, yeah. <laughs> what about, uh, no, Idaho's on there, too. Uh, Nebraska, Idaho, and uh, certain parts of Ohio online. Well, and I mean, they need upgrades for internet. Montana. There's only, there's only so much you can do with corn. Akron, Ohio online. K-H-O-L. <laughs> A-hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh nebraska all right uh <laughs> now we okay all right um okay at&t at&t, AT&T. No come more. at me nebraska <laughs> what? come at me step on it again nebraska. i'm right here oh, nebraska <clears throat> Man, we're going to get that one person from Nebraska that's just going to hate us. Rob and I will take on the entire state. <laughs> that's not hard. Bring it the on. The one person who downloads this on AOL, you know, in three weeks will listen to it. <laughs> very upset. It's true. We're over. We're definitely over the bandwidth gap for them. We do have an audio version, so. Right. There you go. Uh, AT&T says, no more jailbreak tethering in m- with my f- my Y. My- wow. Whoa. I was like, Mogwai. Um, Mogwai. Didn't they already do this? Mogwai. Didn't they already start? Yeah, they already did this. That's why I <coughs> this was everywhere I had, this week. Remember the uh, the app? It was supposed to be a flashlight app, but if you hit the colors in a certain sequence, it would enable you to tether using yes. your phone. Yes, yes. I had that, and I kept it for the longest time, but I never actually used it because they said that if we catch you using tethering through jailbreaking or any other illegal means, then we are going to bill you for it. We are going to take off your unlimited plan. Yeah, yeah, and so then. This- this and is it, not new, as far as I knew. Yeah, they, that sounds like what they're still doing. They, they catch you doing the MyY thing. Uh, maybe it's specifically, hey, we can see if you're using MyY, and we're not going to take it anymore. So, um, yeah. Contact we're users. bad as hell, and we're not going to let you tether anymore. They, 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 they contacted uh, those users to inform that they would be placed in the tethering plan for an additional fee. You know, I, this, is, this is always weird to me, that AT&T will automatically put you in a plan. Uh, because we did that once. We just like swapped a sim out, put it in an old uh, AT and T tilt, and they automatically said, "Hey, we're doing you a favor, and we're going to give you a 250 megabyte plan. Congratulations! Here's ten dollars a month, or fifteen actually, isn't it? Uh, Something like that. So I mean, it's a little." presumptive because I mean, for them to be able to, is there something in the in the terms of service that they can add or remove features? Yes. Whenever they want? Yes. Yeah, there there is. And there's also, it's basically, if you're going to use, uh, it's, uh, the best way I can say, it is the hotel fridge policy. The fridge is there. There's always stuff in the fridge. You don't have to use it, but if you use it, we're going to charge you for it. Yes. Um, Okay, okay. uh, I I, I, I can get that. That is, like, the best way I've compared something to something else all week. It is. (laughs) Actually, all time. Not all week, all time. Thank you, Chachi. Oh, no problem. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. But yeah, that's it's it's all in your contract. It basically says there are a lot of services that we offer, and especially when it comes to things like tethering that are going to put um, a bit of a stranglehold on the data network. So, so what what keeps them from ab- abolishing all of our grandfathered in uh, uh, unlimited plans that the iPhoneers have? Kindness. They could turn that off Kindness. any day if they want. Okay, they can start. <laughs> They can start not being nice and, and well, what they would ha- what would happen is because there are regulations on that sort of thing as far as taking away services you already have and contracts that you already have. Anytime a contract is changed um, without you signing off on it, mm-hmm. you have X amount of days. I think it's like you have ninety days, and they will let you get out of that contract with no penalties whatsoever. Yeah, that was a new thing that came up. Yeah, yeah. That's always that's always been something with all carriers as long as I can remember. Um, I don't know what, what policy or ruling that that comes from, but I know uh, it's happened for Verizon. It's certainly happened for Singular, AT&T, mm-hmm. T-Mobile. There have always been times where they made a change in the contract. And even it's really dumb things like if you make a call to New Mexico between the hours of 10 and 1.30, eh, it's going to cost you one cent more. That's still considered a change of contract, and that means that you can get out of that. Without there were it. some people, there was some sort of change like that that happened to Verizon, I think. And people were trying to see if they could get out of their contract, but I don't think it worked out for the people that did try off of that story. Uh, this is only like a couple months ago, I think. Um, but yeah. Uh, it should Jug- have worked. Uh, Juggalo John in the chat room. Is my why the thing you can't feed after midnight or get wet? Wow. No, you're thinking of gremlins. <laughs> that, that's definitely gremlins. Definitely gremlins. So, um, speaking of other irrelevant crap that no one needs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tokyo Flash has created a new 3D watch. Yes, they have. 
Because why not? Needs a 3D watch. Right. Yeah. Cause, Cause you know, telling time in two D isn't cause, enough. Yeah, because it isn't hard enough to tell a time when I wake up in the morning without it being in three D. Right. Yeah, I want the full three D experience when I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> any, any? Is this a picture of it? Is yeah. this? Is this supposedly a? Uh... That's a rendering of it. And oh, okay. I, there's a, there's a video as well. But I thought because it was in three D. There's know. a video. Oh, there is a there is a video. Let's see what's there's going on. There's several videos. So wait, wait. I'm not going to see this in 3D. This is kind of BS. That's true. Maybe I'm out of touch, but who's still wearing watches these days for time for time telling? Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually I have a very nice watch that I like a whole lot. It has uh, a old, not a new quote unquote LCD, but a liquid crystal display, like little tubes that light up inside of it. Ooh. It uses up so much battery power that you have to press a button and it'll be on for five seconds before it turns itself off. But it's huge and made out of, like, aluminum. And I realized why I stopped wearing it. Because I use a laptop. You cannot wear a metal watch and use a laptop. I know. Yeah. Really? It, it I couldn't figure it out because I love the watch and I stopped using it. Like, oh, I'll try it out again. Nope, can't do it. Okay, so my well, my thoughts on this whole thing. And I'll relate this into something uh, from earlier that Sark might uh, agree with me with. So why is 3D still a thing? And I'll say that uh, because uh, Saturday... Uh, one of the points I think uh, what no Christopher Nolan made, uh, what was it? What did he say? Um, something why oh, go, oh, why I, go, why go three D when you can go seven so foot high? In, in no, 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 no. It was why go three D if you can go seven stories high? Yeah, with in reference in reference to three D compared to IMAX. I don't understand why three D is even a market anymore. To be perfectly honest. Because you haven't seen it on a fifty-five inch Samsung <laughs> LED three TV. I know, but it. Wait, 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 what is your experience, though, uh, uh, Eamon? Uh, what, what, what have you... What, I'm not going to call you a wrestle fan on this show. Oh, um, I, yeah, what, what, have you seen 3D movies in the theater? I've, I've seen 3D... I mean, yeah, we do have 3D movies. Uh, but it just doesn't... <laughs> He's referring to Texas as if it's like a different country. <laughs> that, 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 no, you have, have 3D have you in seen Texas? Have 3D movies? Or is yes. everything in 2D? Yes, have we, we have, yes, are you, we have 3D. I mean, are you we like have a, IMAX, too. I mean, we know Nebraska doesn't have 3D. Well, Texas, yeah, now with the running water in 3D movies. <laughs> Congratulations. Nebraska, in Nebraska, when you go to see a movie, let's be honest. <laughs> it's, it's a giant flip book. <laughs> and there's just a guy standing in the corner with like a rope and he just pulls on the rope. And then all the pages <laughs> flip by. The movie's actually like 10 seconds long because he gets winded. Oh my god. He's like, but, oh, he's like oh, oh god, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, my point is there's no real experience that I gain from watching a 3D movie now okay. as opposed to seeing it in 2D. Yeah, in yeah. Honesty. In all honesty. And, and the problem also is like, if I want it in a home and it's expensive. Now, now I actually was a story this week about I think Sony and Samsung and maybe a couple others are actually finally going to standardize 3D glasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what does that do? Because we still have LG that says, hey, we have technology where you can just bring your glasses home from... Uh, from the theaters and use them on your TV. I, I have a bomb to drop on you. Ready for this? Okay. There was a time when people argued that you didn't need anything better than the wax cylinder. The wax so, cylinder. That's all I'm saying. Okay, we I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying that 3D is the best thing ever, but I'm saying it's it's a, the technology we're looking at is a new thing and it's much better than anything we've seen in the past. And okay. It is absolutely an increase in content intake, how much you can see, how much detail you can see, and the combination of HD footage and the things that we're doing with red cameras, as well as 3D, are adding, like, not just market speak, they're legitimately adding more to the experience. There's more bits there for you to see, which means there's more of an experience for you to see, which means there's more tools for artists to use to create an experience. So it is new and, quote unquote, better by face value. So there was a time when we thought that vinyl records were awesome. Um, and they are, they do still have their, have their application, but they're not practical. And there was a time when a wax cylinder sounded like a, uh, sounded like a live performance to a lot of people. And that's not true. Anymore. But more importantly, it adds money to ticket prices and revenue for the studios. So they're happy and it's not going to stop anytime soon. 
they get away with charging 15 bucks a ticket instead of seven dollars a ticket. Right. It's going to keep pumping it out. Mm-hmm. I've seen a couple, maybe five, six movies in 3D over the last couple, last year or two. It hasn't really added much to the experience for me. I saw the new Transformers in 2D at the drive-in, actually, and just enjoyed it just as much as I did some of the 3D movies I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chill is in the chat room saying Transformers uh, looked good. The movie wasn't great, but the 3D was well done. He also adds, and no one needed 640K of memory, Bill Gates. <laughs> right. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's a perfect example. Yeah. And there are, it's also, I mean, we've had this talk, too, before. There are plenty of movies where they just, they slam 3D on it just for kicks. And there are movies where right. it actually worked, like Avatar and, uh, and uh, Tron. Definitely. So the new Batman, is it being shot in 3D or is it just being made for IMAX? IMAX. Just the IMAX. They were shooting it with IMAX cameras. They had to reload it like every five minutes, I swear. So, uh, yeah, Christopher Nolan is big on the IMAX stuff. And they broke a And they, they, they broke, broke they a almost, Well, they, they, it ate a tape. Yeah, it ate, it, it it ate a $750 tape. Yeah, yeah, they let the, the 10,000 people crowd uh, know. <laughs> and then... Uh, a, a stunt double in Carnegie almost ran over the IMAX camera and operator. Well, mind you, mind you, there's only about four or five of these in in, in the world. Yes. Which we yeah. know IMAX has been around how long, and there's still only four or five of them in the world. Really? What? Maybe one company makes them. That must be it. They got a lockdown on them. I mean, really... They're out of parts. They're I mean... out of one part to keep making them, and it's in Japan, and they're still waiting on the parts to come in. <laughs> that sounds logical to me. I don't know. I'll buy just... that. I feel like that's a that's a wrong statistic. <laughs> hey, hey, the director himself said so. What what is his quote? Um well there was the Well he asked the camera operator how many there was. Oh the yeah. camera operator did sound like he was making up the number. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, there's only like seven of them in the world. Yeah. Deal with it, Rob. We're right, you're wrong. Oh, no. uh, how does that feel? How does that feel? Uh, I don't know. I yeah, I, he's Googling it right now. <laughs> I am. I really am. I cannot believe that there's not that many. No, there's probably there's probably a lot more than that. And, I know uh, there's around 500 IMAX theaters in the world. Mm-hmm. But I can't. And, and they ever see, I got the Carnegie Science Center for you Pittsburghers, the, uh, the room that says shows how long it is and how many times the film will wrap around the Three River Stadium. Okay, I haven't been there for a while. Um, there are, as of, I have, as of May 28, 2009, there were 26 IMAX film cameras in the world. So he wasn't that far Reproducing off. Reproducing like rabbits. That's still a low number. Yeah. You gotta be honest. For that, that as much still... as they're being used, that's still... Uh, not really. Although I consider, wonder... consider what companies are using them, mostly okay. American production companies. Okay. Consider how many movies come out in a year and how many of those are legitimately IMAX and not just pretending to be IMAX. Because don't forget, there is quote-unquote IMAX, and then there's IMAX. Yeah, even even Dark Knight, not the entire film was shot in IMAX. It was yeah. like key scenes, key like key, right. key like key action scenes. They only Usually an IMAX camera so is not something you approach an entire film with. It's a tool that you use to approach certain scenes. Mm. Unless you are doing something for like the Science Center. Like right. the, the tour of the Grand Canyon was pretty cool. And I imagine then you're dealing with like <laughs> this camera is owned by, you know, Hubble or whatever. <laughs> Hubble. Hubble. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure NASA owns at least one, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways. Uh so uh, I think Chilla put this in the chat room. Uh Sony Distribution Center getting uh burnt in the London riots. I'm not I I seen just, just random tweets on this today as I've been working. What is going on in London right now? It's just a bunch of miscreants are tearing the city apart? It's not good. It's uh the, the it's really sad, to be honest. It's not too funny. Um but London, Bristol, Liverpool are all completely up in flames and it has a lot to do with the fact that um similar to the situation here in that a lot of people don't have a job a lot of people's uh, jobs and well-being in the future like debt wise have been completely tarnished and a lot of people are very upset about that and they're Mm -hmm. taking quite a bit of action on top of the likes of like copycat crimes and things like that so basically a a medium-sized group of people got very angry started rioting and then a bunch of uh teenage kids thought that riding was really cool and yeah, the and then the mom- it, 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 it was the same way for the um for the uh, uh where, where i forgot where in canada but the vancouver hockey, vancouver for the vancouver riots yeah. it was a group of people that were less let's just say pissed off about you know hockey less than pleased less than pleased mixed with a bunch of crazy people that were like we'll use this as an excuse 
took advantage yeah. of the situation. Yeah, definitely. you know. So let's use this as a. I mean, much much like fans of Pittsburgh sport teams use uh, things as an excuse to set one or two couches on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, literally, <laughs> a whole lot of London. Listen, is, is up in. You flames. will not knock. The art of the couch burning, okay? You know why I won't knock the art of the couch burning? Because, uh, like, Steelers won the Super Bowl, there was, like, two couch fires. Yeah, that's it. I mean... I, Vancouver I, lost, yeah. and their entire city went up in the room. Yeah. <laughs> because, and, so in all, and in all honesty, if you need an excuse to loot and, you know, loot your own city, then you're not, you're not a real, you know... Yeah, um, and, it, and it brings up a lot of questions about, like, you, you know, are you actually accomplishing anything? You're, re- that you're really just bored, you yeah. know? And there's really, like, because what, what's going to happen is a total derail. But, like, hundreds of people go along sort of like the L.A. riots. In the L.A. riots, they cause, like, $8 billion worth of damage to, like, Asian storefronts alone. Like, people who are selling Chinese food. And it's not just that, oh, insurance will cover it. That's, like, somebody's life their whole life invested in the shop and you're just going to destroy their stuff and just yes they can like buy some of it back but it's insurance valuation and they're never going to get their life back so the whole thing's a big mess anyway funny story sony burned to the ground <laughs> that one's for chachi yeah. it's not paying attention um, was, it a, was it a warehouse or was it a um, uh, it, production it says a distribution center in the in the story that was sent by Chill. so it was probably packaging and shipping right yeah. Yeah, but still, that's going to be... The pictures I saw that were pretty amazing. It almost looked fake Photoshop the way it had burned. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, they did a lot of damage there. Yeah, a lot of the pictures coming out of there. Because usually you're like, oh, there's riots, things are on fire. You see, like, roofs on fire. No, these are, like, entirely burned out buildings over the course of a day. Yeah, this is much more than a couch on fire. This is this is pretty intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is on the scale of the L.A. riots of the 19th. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did get it. We actually did get a Facebook from our fan for the wrestling show uh, that, that is in London. Uh, and 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 said it's pretty pretty crazy right now. Yet he yet this is the week that he he met us on the show. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> that's because he can't go to work. He can't go to. Oh, was that it? I'm guessing. Probably. Uh, that's probably it actually. Um, <laughs> they told him to stay home. He's a doctor, so yeah, so he got the ch- a chance to watch wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so we hope we hope them's doing good out there. Um, well, let's get uh, back to the rest of the story so we can get out of here. Uh, Apple offers gift cards for old iPhones, iPads, and computers, even PCs. What? Yeah, what? they uh, they revamped their recycling program. It used to be that say you want to go to the Apple store, you want to buy a new computer, and they're like, great. Did you have an old computer? Because we're totally going to recycle it for you, and it worked out really well. Uh, the problem is, what if you know you're buying products all the time? You don't think about it when you buy it, or you might not have all the money in the world to buy a new Apple product. What they've done now is, it doesn't matter if you buy anything from Apple. They're working with uh, We Recycle, is the name of the company, WeRecycle.com, uh, to recycle any and all electronics. And so, if you have an old iPhone or something, you can send it to Apple. They'll make an evaluation, much like uh, companies like Gazelle. Make a valuation on how much it's worth, yeah. and they'll give you an offer on an Apple gift card for that device. And if you like it, they keep the device, and you get a gift card in the mail. Yay! Nice. nice. And this is same the, as cash. And this is what? Oh, and this is the uh, the the we we recycle dot com as well. And I guess you can. I guess if you wanted, you could you can connect with them directly, right? Yeah, yeah. You can use we recycle dot com. They contract with uh, PowerOn. Uh, who is doing the estimations of uh, in the second second party markets and like eBay's and all that stuff mm-hmm. of what your device is actually? Is there any difference to this uh, in uh, the and Actually, is a question I was going to ask you off air. Uh, I have a lot of just old printers and stuff I want to get rid of, and there's like locally with uh, Construction Junction here. Um, you know, obviously you're not going to get money for it, but is there any any difference between preferring one or the other? Not really, because at this point, it used to be when you recycled electronics, there were a lot of really shady operations where they would basically uh, bundle together uh, shipping crates full of old computers, ship them off to Asia, where people by hand in really nasty places would remove the precious metals from these boards Mm -hmm. and then junk the rest. But at this point, uh, thanks to companies like Apple and people like Gazelle, uh, responsible electronics recycling has become a lot more important. So... Even if you take it to eCycle, our local recycling program here in Pittsburgh, you can go to constructionjunction.org if you want to know more about that. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you send it off to Apple, you're pretty much sending it to the same place. But in the sense of, like, if you've got an old, like, 
286 you want to get rid of, you should probably just take it to eCycle. I wouldn't send that to Apple. No, no, of course, of course. And that's kind of yeah. more my situation. Uh, we just just have piles of tech. I haven't had anywhere to say. I don't want to put in a landfill. That's for right. sure. So, yeah, and, and it is a concern because I know uh, I, I had uh, optioned uh, Gazelle to a local nonprofit about the drives that they offer. And they were like, well, is it is it safe? Because there, there are a lot of uh, sketchy operations out there that they'd seen being an environmental yeah. group as they are. Uh, and and they uh, they got the they got the, the tags on their website, so I believe them. Um, yeah, Gazelle Gazelle is apps. They go through lengths to make sure that. Oh yeah, that all yeah, and that's that's good to see. Good to see the responsible about that because I mean we are. I mean that is that is a word because all these gadgets we buy and you know how many people are buying you know yearly iPods, i i iPads, iPhones, Android devices. Let's not forget them. You know, I mean, Chachi, you've been through, through two Android devices now. You know, and plus all those so. Chinese knockoffs. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. But there's a lot of bad stuff in there. So. Yeah, there is quite a bit, uh, a lot of bad stuff. So here's your uh, your PSA for the week, kids. I ate uh, recycle those old electronics. Do not put them on the curb, or I will come to your house and punch you in the face. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of Nebraska. Company, take it apart for you. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Nebraska. <laughs> Blame them. I do. Hey, we all, or we just send them to Nebraska to desire them. Like, Nebraska is actually an e waste recycling dump. Nebraska <laughs> just probably uses it for compost. What? I, or, I don't know. They could. They in Nebraska. So, something, they could, something like that? Yeah, yes. something like that. Something Nebraskan. Something okay. Nebraskan. Uh, is there anything else here we want to definitely touch base on before we get out of here, guys? Uh, I think we're. I think we can uh, wrap it up. All right. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right, all right, um, all right, guys. Uh, uh, Tom, I wanted to uh, thanks for joining us this week. It's been a pleasure. I'd love to come back sometime. Check them out. Talk about Nebraska talk or about the- t-shirt selling <laughs> or corn, whatever you want to talk about. Check him out at Local Bone on Twitter. He does Local Bone things in a Local Bone way. What? You don't want to know what that is, but you can sample and find out for yourself. Yeah, of course. sample Local Bone. <laughs> <laughs> the first sample's for free. The next one you have to pay for. Ooh. <laughs> on the couch, WrestleFan joins us. He's at the WrestleFan. You can see him uh, most weeks on the Wrestling Mayhem yeah, show. Yeah, he's Most weeks. Most weeks. Most weeks. He does things. You're actually uh, you're going to the San Antonio for school. I am, yes. Uh, in about two weeks now, I believe. Uh-huh. And you're going for? Uh, communications. What that, what that will hold, I'm not sure. <laughs> so he has a clear career path ahead I, of him. That's I'm, good I'm, to communications see. Communications is a major for people who aren't quite sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> you could be a radio, radio DJ, or you could just be a professional podcaster. Be yeah, anything. You could Why be not? Mike Sorg if you want. I don't, That's right. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. It's an unwise was, career, career path. Trust us. Or, I was a comm uh, major and still didn't know what I want to be when or I grow up. So you can just give up that. on life and move to Nebraska. <laughs> yes. I, no, no. No, that's why would I do that? Seriously, just an joke. option. Don't come to Nebraska. Right it's worse than being a communication. I don't, I'm not going to live off corn. Okay. Uh, I'm not. All right, all right. I hate corn. Right. Chachi, Chachi says dot net. He's doing his show. He is Batman. That kid makes my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and we got two more hours Seriously. after this. He is Batman. He, he, I am Batman. Yes. Uh, well, you can check out the, the video game stuff yeah. over at the You talked about Mortal Kombat. I was excited. Well, see, Mortal Kombat, that, that book, that mm-hmm. book upset me okay. when it came to Mortal Kombat. Okay. Because they had me play seven different Sim games. Okay. Like, I, I played, I played, uh, Sims 1, 2, and 3, Sim City, Sim City 2000, uh, two other Sim Cities. Josh, yeah. Can I just say that I love your angry face? Because you shake your head in this amazing way like an 80-year-old man. All right, that's fine. But um, <laughs> they they had me play all these Sim games, and I'm not done with them yet. I'm sure there's more. Sims 4, Citizens on Patrol. Yes. <laughs> and they Sims like, 15, Welcome to Nebraska. They put, <laughs> they put one Mortal Kombat game in the book. One. That's kind of silly. Just yeah, and it was, it was just the first one. I'm sorry, which, the second one's worth keeping. Exactly. Absolutely. If, if you pick one Mortal Kombat game to put in this 1001 video games you must play before you die, it's definitely not the first one. Are they have Street no. Fighter in there? 
Yeah. Which ones do they have a Street Fighter? Uh, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Tournament. Really? Yes. Hyper? Ugh. That's like, that's like the, 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 wait. There the might be more that's in like, there. That's like Turbo or something. Yeah. Like a Street Fighter on steroids, right? Yeah, yeah, that was like the second one they put on Super Nintendo. It was there like might be another one, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. third version of Street Fighter 2. Right. I, I, that, really, that's the one? Ah, come on. Right, like come I said, on. there's been tons of times where I disagree with this book completely. Yep. Yet he presses on. He like presses Minesweeper. On. Minesweeper. <laughs> Who put freaking Minesweeper in this book? I played Good luck Minesweeper. With Clue, Clue Land or Urban Fighter if you're Clue Urban Clue Champion Land. if you have to play that too. I played I played Minesweeper for a half hour. That was the longest I've ever played Minesweeper in my entire life. I was pretty addicted to Minesweeper for a while. I cannot lie. I don't like Minesweeper. Wow, really? <laughs> also, side note, Rob. I think they already made Sims uh, Nebraska. It's called Farmville. Oh, nice. See but, what you did there. But yeah, you can you can check out the video game stuff at chachisays.net, and right. you can check out the vidcast at chachisays.net or blip.tv slash chachisays or no. Wait, yeah, that was Chachi says. I'm sorry. YouTube's Mr. Yeah. Chachi says. I YouTube, remember you got it wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about. YouTube.com slash Mr. Chachi says, or you can check out Unsung. The show they pay me to do. Yeah, there should be a new episode this Monday. Should be. Should be. Should be. And you can check that out over at pittsburghonvideo.org, where we're all over, because we're awesome. Rob De La Hi. Hey, hey you Rob. Do things. Hey, Rob hey. doesn't do anything. Good week? What? Good week? Good week? <laughs> 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 RobJDLC.com. Go follow, follow his Twitter. He he uh, finds interesting messages in the stalls. I do, I do. You know, I don't tweet that often anymore. No, you don't. I really don't. I think I think it has a lot to do with the um, like like I was saying how how I got out of work relatively early today, and that meant that I left before eight o'clock at night, and I didn't know what to do with myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think that whole business of me being like hyper busy. I might have something to do with the, the lack of tweets. It, on, it's on been it. weird for me, too. I haven't been, I, you know, the, not sitting in a computer all day means I'm not, like, tweeting, you know, yeah. or seeing what everybody else is doing, unfortunately. And I, I, because I have the iOS 5 nonsense beta on my phone, I did something where it wasn't jiving with my iTunes account, I plugged my phone into my computer, mm. and then it was like, these things aren't authorized, and then it removed every app from my phone for me. Oh. Oh, Which is really nice, but I went without Twitter for like a week, and I didn't even break a sweat. Oh no! Oh, Which has a lot to do. I was just like, I have, I have nothing to tweet at this moment. Just got worked out of it. Oh just no! Got worked out of it. no. Well, hey, hey guys, you can check us. Uh, uh, PodcampPittsburgh.com is open yes. for registration. If you're in a Pittsburgh area, you can come you hang like out with trap. cool people like me, yeah. or people so, cooler than me, like Rob. Uh, or get, or get September in the face, 17th right. and 18th. Cool yes. people all around. That's, That's right. my birthday week. That's right. Go check all it right. out. We uh, we we were scheduled to do a uh, a live awesome cast on that Sunday at some point when that schedule comes out. If I don't right. sabotage it, right? Are you? Uh, hey, Mike, are you doing anything else at PodCamp or is that it? Uh, I, you know what? I haven't settled on it yet, and I guess I better soon. Uh, I think I'm going to do the uh, kind of video podcasting. Uh, I, I don't want to call it 201. I'm just going to call it Advance or something. In our, video podcasting wirecast or something. Good move. Make yourself stand out. <clears throat> I'll, I'll be hosting my annual session of uh, Advanced 649ing at the bar later at night. That's a drink so, for those wor worried. 649ing, yes. 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 That, that's, 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 uh, everybody keeps their pants on for 649 that, that yes. yes, they do. Whoa, whoa. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> or as we like to call it here in Pittsburgh, the 412. Whoa. That's never been a thing. I know. I'm trying to make it a thing. And if you're going to do the 412, you got to throw up the hand sign as well. Yes. What's the hand sign? Say the hand sign? Four, one, two. Come on. Like that. I, I thought there was like some kind of... like. No, there's no... It's no. actually just the 412. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, not, it's not that, Rachel. Okay, I see how that is. Yeah. You're killing me, Mike. I, I don't... I, I, you know, got like, ketchup wow. juice all over my hand. Oh, no! To, what? <laughs> ketchup juice? <laughs> I was going to reference right. a ketchup bottle, but it's covered so, in condensation. Anyway, been, let's wrap anyways, this up. Anyways, hey guys, we're here. If you want to join this mayhem, like uh, like the tens and tens of people have uh, in the chat room this week, have been. You can uh, find us at, at at awesomecast dot or at awesomecast on Twitter. Email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia dot com. Check us out at awesomecast dot com, 
Call us at 724-25-ACAST. That's 724-252-2278. We're also available on iTunes, Mediafly, Roku, Blip TV, or YouTube. Thank you for being your, our awesome audience. We'll see you next week. I'm I got off work at like 5 or something. I haven't gotten off work that early in like months. Did we didn't know what to do with ourselves. We legitimately like walked out the back door and stared at each other for a few minutes. Trying to figure out what was going on. Wait, you got off work at 5 to 8? No, like 5.20. Oh, okay. okay like back. super early. <laughs> I was like, wait, what time do you get for work? easily like the last 15 shows, I've had no time at all to prepare. Even when I was in Baltimore, like, I had just gotten finished at work, and I came back to my hotel room to do the show and went back to work. So you you had time to contribute to the show, but you fucking didn't. But I Is fucking that... didn't. No, actually, I did a bunch of research so I actually can comment, even though we have this wonderful story from 96.1 <laughs> FM. I can comment on this story using useful information that I found elsewhere. Well, yeah, okay. Wow, you're so Let condescending. Me... <laughs> First, you just said yourself that you couldn't find a legitimate text site with the story. Chachi, you know I'm giving. And I, I know. <laughs> I'm not aware of this. Listen, what? I, I read... Michael Sorg, on the other hand, is not off the hook in any way, shape, or no, form. No, no, we don't like. We current... don't like my interior decorating. For uh, very expensive clients, I was actually when I was in Baltimore, I had I had I was working on something, waiting for some reps to show up, and I remembered that I had a wallpaper that said "Fuck yeah, feels good, man." <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I should probably make a new desktop that doesn't have that wallpaper on yeah. it. Sometimes I have to log into my uh, iMac upstairs. I forget they have, like, a, a very uh, sexual... Uh, uh, Do you have, like, a naked hentai oh, girly no, as no, your no. wallpaper? No, no, it's, it's, a, it's a, this photography of, like, a, of a Supergirl that, that, oh. I, that I like. Sure, photography. So I got halfway to Guar. Yeah, Did you? Yes. I started with the Sesame Street channel. I'm up to Lincoln Park. But did, when you saw my screenshot, can you understand my plight? Yes, I do. Like, you see, like, all the other stations I have and everything yes. else. It doesn't make any sense no, at all. No, not at all. Sorry. Hello, Pandora. I, should be able to I love the smell of napalm at the beginning we, of a podcast. Have... <laughs> Since <laughs> when do call centers fucking unionize? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Well, it's also, I mean, maybe and we should talk about this on the show, but call centers really are like something it. that have needed a big turnaround for quite some time. Well, I'm not... I, think, I think this goes into the idea of, like, uh, you know, you can do self-checkout at stores now, Give like pretty much up all stores. I think we're really close to being, being able to do, like, self-checkout for call centers because uh, we don't need 5,000 people taking phone calls about why your phone smells like your child. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what the hell? <laughs> no, but uh, my whole thing is a call center has always seemed like a, that one industry where you could open a window and spit and hit someone to take your job. <laughs>